One of my uh, loyal viewers has just asked for an updated video of the old Betson claw machine. Well, here's the updated video. Made a few changes since my last video, but not many. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So, just as a recap of everything I've done, um, all four new lamps up in the top here. Um, I cleaned and greased and lubricated the, uh, the claw uh, track. Uh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> the the uh, the bridge. Actually, the proper terminology is the bridge. This uh, piece going from here to here, and that is actually called the bridge, and they. This device here is called, I think it's either the car or the trolley, uh, depending on who you talk to. And of course we've got the claw down here. You may notice that the power cable going to the claw magnet or coil is uh, in much better shape. That's because I replaced that. Um, I actually made a new cable out of an old cell phone charger. The cables actually sell for about 60 bucks cell phone charger was free so naturally I picked the cheapest solution but this thing is working pretty damn well and now because it has a new cable when the claw drops it doesn't get tangled in the cable anymore as it was doing before so that's all fixed up um, when I had this apart I found that the coil had been replaced very recently I had the same coil that's being sold on eBay right now um, which is about a $30 part. Um, I added a few stuffed animals, just cheap ones that I found in local uh, discount stores, and some of my own, like this Mickey Mouse that's clinging for dear life. I like to think that he's trying to save the lives of other stuffed animals from being thrown down the chute. Um, no real changes on the external appearance, but I did one other thing. I um, I wasn't really happy with the way my replacement side panel looked. It was starting. To, it, it really looked out of place, and and uh, it didn't match the other side perfectly. Since this is an aluminum panel, and this was a stainless steel panel, so I went ahead and I uh, I took both panels off, cleaned them thoroughly with uh, rubbing alcohol, and I've applied a um, like a vinyl contact paper is what they call it, but it's actually a vinyl, um, uh, sheeted vinyl material printed to mimic the appearance of wood. And you'll see I did that on the other side as well. So that kind of evens out the appearance and it makes it look less like it was repaired. Um, everything in here is unchanged. Um, when I rebuilt the machine or put it back in working order, one of the first things I did was I took the entire coin mechanism, actually both coin mechanisms apart, and I washed the coin acceptors in hot soapy water and uh, put new lamps in both sides. And I repainted the coin mechanisms um, with an engine paint, like a, a semi-gloss engine paint, which is pretty, pretty tough stuff. So that should be... Uh, that should look good for a while. I also took these apart and cleaned them. I mean, you know, this is normal. Actually, that's loosened up. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> yeah, I think that it loosened up a little bit, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. But anyway, um, I also carpeted the, uh, the prize chute as well, and you can't really see it, but the uh, the play floor is completely carpeted. This is um, an automotive style carpet. It's a uh, low pile, easy to clean, and is uh, really inexpensive. Uh, so that's what I had used for that. Um, I stuck a screw up here so that way the door doesn't fall open, but I'm gonna grab a screwdriver here and we'll see inside. When I got this machine, it was in rough shape. It had been sitting in a barn 
for a couple of years and um and not a not a dry one either um this barn had water running down the walls it was in the basement of, a, of an 1870s barn huge huge barn gothic style pretty cool and uh, there was water running um, down the sides of the foundation um, this machine had only been spared because it was sitting in the middle of the room not on the on the edge so so down in here we have a box of spare parts which is pretty much empty at the moment and that box also includes some uh, documentation dip switch settings that kind of stuff all stuff that I got off the internet um, you know you could actually hide a person in here <laughs> and like have the person jump out and surprise somebody it's big enough right no maybe not uh, so here's the coin box I repainted the coin box with uh, high gloss engine paint yet again um, it's not scratch proof but it looks better than it did it really should be I mean if I really cared enough I would sandblast it and recoat the whole thing with epoxy paint anyway so looking inside we have the uh, the main control board and behind it is the light light control board which controls the uh, chase lights up in the marquee I still need new bulbs for that by the way and we've got our power supply right here main transformer behind that is a surge protector which is original to the machine as far as I can tell this is the test switch in case you're wondering what that does it puts the machine into a test state so if I press it right now maybe it won't do it but oh you know what it has to be in um, it has to be in a certain mode for that to work but almost got something now, so you can hear what these relays sound like. I'll, uh, I'll run it through a complete cycle. <coughs> so we're going to just listen, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, and now I'm going to drop the claw. And what you're hearing are all of these relays which are underneath this label firing as needed. I'll do that again. So let's see, forward, side, I'm sorry, that was actually left, right, left, back, uh, right, forward, left, drop claw. Coming up, turning home. Done. So that's that. Um, anyway, so that's all been fixed. I had to replace a couple of fuses, and uh, because there was a short up in the bridge wiring, I had to um, replace. Actually, I jumped. Um, what was it? Because I there was smoke pouring out from under here. I had to jump. Um, it's actually on the back side of the board. I had to, um, and I think it was right near these capacitors. Uh, one of the one of the uh, tracers had melted, but that's all fixed now. Uh, so here again, this is the light chase light control board, and this potentiometer right here is what adjusts the speed of the lights. Um, Volume is way down right now. You can barely hear it. That's controlled by this potentiometer. And all of the settings for gameplay, aside from what's burned into the EEPROM, are controlled by these dip switch blocks. There's two of those. Um, so there you go. I hope this is a good enough update. We'll look up inside here. This is what it looks like behind the prize chute area. There's the speaker, which goes right into the prize chute. And uh, the cable going up to the bridge goes through this hole, through a PVC pipe. 
and we're gonna zoom out a little bit and over here that ribbon cable goes up to the timer display and uh, that's pretty much it and you're still looking up that's just uh, structural members and cables coming from the coin mechanism area and uh, that's over here so you can see in here we have our um, this is actually a uh, timer not a timer this is a um, uh, a coin counter every time a coin is dropped and I'll show you how that works um, the counter advances one click so we're gonna now simulate a coin drop by pressing this lever like that you can actually see every time a coin is dropped it advances one number okay and they both do it of course the same way so that's that this is actually how the um, the machine owners can determine how much money is supposed to be in the machine so they'll compare the previous reading to the current reading and if it says there's you know 500 clicks or 500 coins um, there better be 500 coins in that bin otherwise somebody's either cheating the machine or stealing money from it um, or in some cases it could be malfunctioning this is actually locked so that you can't take the coin counter out and replace it with another one of a lower number at least I believe that's the case so you might if you own say a vending company you you own let you know these machines are all over the place in different businesses and you're the one who's controlling the money um, or you're the one who's basically keeping an eye on the operation um, you can actually use that coin counter to determine if one of your employees is is, dis is dishonest being a cash business um, dishonesty is a real problem uh, with a lot of these businesses so um, and that's just to prevent or to show the owner of the machine or the owner of the business you know that uh, people are or are not doing their jobs in an honest manner um, because this machine can be keyed uh, differently um, you can actually have uh, one key for the that the ma like the master key for the um, for the uh, this box here, and only the owner of the of the of the company would have that key. And then you could have one key for this, one key for the bottom. You know, uh, the cash box can have its own lock, so that let's say you have one guy who's the technician and one guy who collects money, for instance. Um, you could actually key this box differently so that your technician does not have access to the money that the machine collects. I don't know why anyone would, would do it that way because, you know, you're supposed to trust your employees. But nevertheless, that's just the world we live in. Um, now, I thought I brought my ball of string back to my parents' house because I have another treat for you guys, quite literally. Um, I actually bought a candy crane. Uh, it's actually made by Smart Industries, and uh, I bought one uh, from my parents' house, and uh, you know, for when you know, the kids in the family come over and and see my parents, they can actually play with a, a real live candy crane that has candy in it. I dumped thirty dollars worth of candy into the damn thing, so they better use it. Um, so you'll be seeing that very soon. I have to make a video of it. I had to make a bunch of repairs to it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to, to, to uh, catalog them on video, but I'll describe what I did. A lot of the same repairs I did to this machine. Um, things like micro switches uh, were faulty. Um, it had a wiring harness issue. It had uh, the claw coil shorted out and blew up about one eighth of the control board so I had to fix that actually I ended up replacing the board because you know but anyway these things you'll you'll see in here of uh, when I'm ready to make that video but I'm gonna close this up and we'll try to win some stuff um, this machine doesn't really have very good controls as far as um, 
the odds of winning. This is an old fashioned machine. It's, it doesn't have the ability to track the number of wins. Um, so all of the controls are manual and they're done through um, making adjustments to the, to the claw assembly or making adjustments to the power going to the coil. Um, in the old days, or I'm sorry, in the, in the, in the current machines, um, it has the ability of tracking the number of wins. And if somebody wins 16 times in a row, the machine's gonna shut down and notify the, the operator. Let's try to win something, actually. Actually, you know, I think we won a prize when we um, were doing those relay tests. So here we go. I didn't really try that time. Notice how much quieter this thing is when the cover's on. But right now, this thing is almost good enough to go back in service. Like, I could put it in a commercial setting and it would do just fine. Um, I have been testing the hell out of it, making sure that it is absolutely 100% running in good condition. Um, and uh, I'm confident that I could put this in a restaurant or in a, in a, in a billiard parlor or something, bowling alley, and it would, uh, it would, it would run for quite some time before it ever malfunctioned. You know, I mean, it's an old machine it's from 1988, so it's about 24 years old, but, you know, so, but it still works. You know, it's still uh, a good running machine. It would need an entire lock set. And in fact, I'd like to buy one of these uh, glass panel locks before they stop making the damn things. But, um, you know, it just needs a good lock set and it can go on, it can go on the game floor, no problem. When you're in free play mode, um, the credits don't matter. I think I had hit that button 21 times, which is why it shows 21 credits. But when you're in free play mode, it doesn't, it doesn't actually deduct the credits when you start a new game, which is normal operation for this type of, of machine, I believe. I won again, almost. Yeah, I won. It's almost too easy. Um, one of the ways of controlling the odds of winning on a machine this old is by packing the machine the right way, or the wrong way. <laughs> you have to pack it tightly, and you have to make sure that... See, this thing is just too damn easy. You have to load it with prizes that are hard for it to grab. Um, heavy prizes, like that Homer Simpson doll. I could grab it if it was in the right position, but the way it sits right now. See these balls? They are very easy for the machine to grab, so it has no problem grabbing them. You know, Snoopy. I want Snoopy. Another way you can make it harder to win is by controlling the motor speed. If you speed it up, it, uh, it has a hard time. Look at that, I got him by his feet. Oh, dropped him. These are the most expensive prizes in the machine. These are um, Kins clips. They're made by the Webkins uh, uh, sweatshop employees. But um, they're marketed by Webkins and they clip on to your keys or whatever. And they're small enough so that they slip through the jaws, but I've usually had a good experience winning them from this. Yeah, see, I won that one. I paid like $3 a piece for those. I only have two of them. Most of these stuffed animals are from a dollar store, so um, they're actually technically dog toys because the company who made them doesn't want to make them safe for children, so that's how they save money. And what children wants a dog toy, right? What child wants a dog toy? Am I losing the ability to speak? Anyway, I don't know what that's supposed to be, but it's kind of mushy. It's like styrofoam. So let's take a look inside here. I know this video is getting long, but if you wanted an update, you're going to get an update. Prop this thing open. Get 
a little prop rod built in. That's kind of nice. Um, this glass is heavy. Oh, here's something I wanted to mention. This machine is kind of crappy because if you have a low ceiling in your business or wherever it happens to be, you can never take this panel off because it has to be raised completely all the way up before you can take it off. Um, that sucks because <laughs> if it wasn't for these high ceilings, I wouldn't be able to load the machine up. It's kind of one of the caveats, I guess, of its design. Did I win that one? I want another chicken. I keep winning a chicken. See, here's a good example of a stuffed prize. It's stuffed in there in such a way that it's almost impossible to win. Actually, I think I pulled some of its hair out. I saw some bits of hair falling. There's another dog toy. Now this is an example of a lightweight toy. It weighs next to nothing. And it just it doesn't have a hard time grabbing it. Now here's, we're going to try to get that little ball right there. After a while, the claw coil starts to get pretty toasty. Right now it's kind of cool, actually. I'm impressed. Tony the Tiger. I've always had good luck grabbing him. Let's try to grab Tony. Oh, see. It's all in how it lands. That's what matters the most. <laughs> What's nice about this machine is I never replaced any of the micro switches. I just took them apart and cleaned them. Um, they're Belgian switches. They're made very well. Um, they're not designed to be serviced, but they can be. Uh, the ones that were in the smart candy crane were cheap ones. They're actually American-made switches, and I could not get them apart to clean them. Let's see, I got another ball. Now the prize chutes are going to fill up like a... Uh, come on. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty where the prizes are going to be harder to get. I have made some adjustments to this claw. It doesn't close as much as it used to. It only closes uh, that far. But by adjusting the height of this ring, I can control the amount of closure it has. Um, if I was a real shyster and I had this, you know, in a money-making operation, I would, um, I could adjust it so that it only closes, you know, maybe, you know, uh, where am I grabbing it? Like this far, you know. So that's all fully adjustable. I think I got it. Oh, lost it. Got it. I know I got it this time. They're great until I get caught. Says every drug addict ever. They're great until I get caught. Now you get the edge prizes. Oh, I guess I got that one. 
That wasn't too hard. But I can't seem to get the back ones. Like, this little bear... Almost... No, not quite. Hits the glass really hard. It caught on its own. That's the first time that's ever happened. There's some stuff over here. Nope. Alright, let's see. Uh, I wonder if I can get that little teddy bear. Let's try it. Yes! <laughs> oh, that happens too. Gotta watch out for that. Now we'll let it time out this time. Let's see how long. It should be like 30 seconds. I'll just keep playing with it until it drops on me. Nah, screw that. I think all the easy pickings are gone. Now it's going to be hard. Well, that's it for now. I've wasted about 30 minutes of your time. Thank you for watching.